It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of the Hawk Chronicles. Look, I'll even disguise myself as a crew member if you like. Take my offer now or I leave. So your solution is for me to waltz right onto an IDF airbase and steal one of their troop transports? Not just any transport, a VTOL transport. Your mission is to cover the Western Sector. And when the operation is over and I don't return the ship? By then, both of our ships will be deep into the Western jungles. Her position as captain was temporary. Captain McCall left suddenly for the Great Northwest, and she was put here until a new captain could be found. Have they found a new one? They've got it narrowed down to three candidates. What's going to happen to her? For her, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. She's going back to her hometown where she first joined the force. She'll be heading up a major division of the Houston Police Department. Is there going to be a problem? If you're worried about me trying to collect on the bounty, I can't. I'm under a direct commission by the IDF. They'll amply reward me. Unless you want to be a nuclear fireball, you better make it 18. The bomb just kicked off a timer. And now, episode 128, TikTok. A timer? I thought you said Garcia disabled it. She did. This thing had a redundant activator, set to go off after a certain time unless remotely disabled. So Wi-Fi had two systems here. One was for remote detonation, the other was automatic. Tika, we have a bomb about to detonate. Call for emergency clearance and get us into space. We only have about 18 time units. Wit, buckle up. Copy that. Clearance delivery, Mercury for emergency departure. We have a bomb on board set to detonate in 18, over. Mercury, taxi direct to the active. Cleared for immediate departure. Climb to escape velocity on the runway heading. Good luck, over. Delivery, we are rolling for the active. Mercury out. Okay, everyone, tighten those seatbelts up one more time. Major, when we escape Titan's gravity, Get that puppy into the rear airlock chamber. Roger that. Give me a heads up when we're at least two units out. If it looks too close on time, we'll need to eject it and take our chances. You got it. Tika, maximum thrust and climb angle. I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. We're going to pull a few G's, so stay strapped in. Don't worry. I'm not about to get up and walk about the cabin. Retracting wings to full space flight position. Maximum burn for gravity escape in three, two, one. ETA to escape? Estimate escape in 14. Come on, old girl, you can do it. What? Talking to the ship. You'd better be. Old about space station. This is Deep Space One, switching to auto docking sequence. Over. Deep Space One, you are locked on beam. Docking in three, two, one. Capture complete. Over. Capture light is green. Locking bolt light green. Pressurizing. I have a green pressure light. Over. All systems green. Stand by for hatch opening. Agent Simon, welcome aboard, sir. Commander Sims, good to see you again. Robo 4. As always, thank you for your assistance. Appreciation noted. It is one of my many required functions. And Vlad? Vlad is on a short leave, back on Boldabar. Oh dear. I hope you don't have a repeat of what happened last time he did that. Oh yeah, when the two cosmonauts tried to take over the station, that was quite a time. Whatever became of that allegation against Vlad? That he was Bratva? The IDF Interpol connections checked him out. His uncle is Bratva, but Vlad after being recruited by the IDF, came here to get away from everything. Yet they managed to track him down. It's a small universe after all. So, Commander, what are my orders? 
As soon as you appeared on our scanner, we notified command. There is a surface shuttle en route to pick you up. I believe you'll be taken to your quarters on Boldabar to rest and freshen up. And then, the controller will brief you. Excellent. What is the latest you have on Mercury or Wi-Fi? Hopefully, by the time you get to the surface, they'll have the latest update. We still have no definitive word on Major Wit. As far as Wi-Fi, we think he is in orbit over Titan IV. Robo 4, what is the ETA on the shuttle? I expect capture in 15 and a half units. Thank you, Robo 4. Well, Commander, that doesn't give me a lot of time. You can stack your belongings in Airlock Bravo. You'll find a cargo net in there to secure everything. I have just received an update from IDF headquarters. The bat assigned to Captain Nate encountered a spur in the Titan vortex. The Mercury has landed on the surface of Titan III. This message was received from an encrypted IDF transmission from Major Witt. What is Major Witt's current status? As of the time of this report, he was re-entering Titan III's atmosphere and was tracking the Mercury's descent. There is no report of the whereabouts of Wi-Fi. He is planning to reunite with the Mercury upon landing by means of his personal shuttle. I have been informed that a cargo ship has been hijacked by Dista, and possibly Lenora. We've been trying to verify the identity of the female hitchhiker. We know for sure that Lister was involved and possibly his Jubiton pilot. I can tell you with absolute certainty that the female is Lenora. She accompanied me to Titan III with Lister. I convinced her that I was working for Rage and I was taking Lister to a Rage sympathizer. The IDF has verified that a female posing as his solicitor aided in his escape. If that's true, then you might be able to get close to them. Lister doesn't fully trust me. After all, I delivered him right into the arms of the people he tried to destroy during the war. But didn't he see you get arrested too? Yes, but I don't know how convincing our performance was. Commander, headquarters just informed me that Major Witt reported landing at Titan IV and will seek out Captain Nate. Thank you, George. Well, that's good news. Yes, it is. I suppose I should transfer my gear from the stiff to the Bravo airlock. Robo 4, I shall prepare the stiff for auto return to Martin State. Yes, Agent Simon. It would be beneficial to begin the return trip prior to the arrival of the Boulevard shuttle. That be your way of telling me to get a move on? I am suggesting that you need to expedite removing your gear and prepping the stiff for its return voyage. In other words, get a move on. Pushy little fellow, isn't he? I am currently anchored in my default position. My arms cannot reach you to push. Stand by. I believe I must consult my colloquial database. Don't hurry, Agent Simon. We have plenty of time. I have consulted my colloquial database. Yes, Agent Simon. I am being pushy. Get a move on. Major Witt, time to detonation. T minus 2.2. Tika, time to zero G in orbit insertion. T minus 2. We won't make it. All right, Marines, this is where you earn your pay. We'll hit zero Gs at about the same time the bomb is set to detonate. We have green lights on the bat's hold down locks. Can you confirm? Confirm. Locking bolts engaged. Are you going to plan B? Plan B it is. We're pulling less than one and a half Gs right now. Can your people get the bomb in cradle to the cargo door? Not a problem. Free all the pallets with the extra dunnage. Also, do you know how to detach the big metal bay dividers? Way ahead of you. I figured you'd want a debris field. You pulled this stun on Wi-Fi back on Latumus. You think he'll fall for it twice? I don't know. It's better than the alternative right now. Cut loose whatever is non-essential, then button up everyone in the bat. Make sure there's nothing loose in front of it. We're on it. We'll notify you when we're secured inside the bat. Do you have a fix on Wi-Fi? Aye, aye, sir. As soon as we reach orbit, shut down all engines and go to cold run. We have to reduce our heat signature to the minimums. Aye, aye, sir. We have one more little trick up our sleeves. We do? Remember how much I complained when Rogers put in a wired intercom system? I don't remember that, but Sheena told me about it when I took over for her. She said that Rogers had it put in to avoid detection by IDF Customs. If it looked like you were going to get boarded, he could get a message to you wirelessly. Cap, we are in and buttoned up. Proceed with plan. Roger that. Go to max pressure in the cargo bay. Yeah, at the time I thought it was too old school. I told them, hey, let's just run a string in a couple of tin cans. But I'm glad we have it. 
because the Wi-Fi hasn't been able to hear my instructions to wit. So... So, now you want him to hear what you say, right? Exactly. Open all comm channels. I want Wi-Fi to hear our every word. Blow the cargo bay now. Lord Zokar, the Mercury is still trying to make orbit. The bomb timer is still active. T minus 20. Nate, the timer's still active. We can't disable it. Blow the bay doors. My crew is in the bat. They might make it. You said Garcia disabled it. I trust her. The timer doesn't matter. The bomb's inert. Fools, go ahead and die. It's gonna blow. It's gonna... Infrared shows a definitive detonation. Radar detects debris. Be sure. We've seen this act before. On the Tumis? Yes. They fooled me once. My lord, I have no heat signature. Just debris. Were you able to detect any transmissions before this? Nothing. If they were communicating prior to this, I didn't hear it. Perhaps this time the Mercury has met its just fate. Continue to monitor for any heat signature, and I will continue to scan for any radio traffic. Hold our position. Has our fighter made any contact? Negative contact, my lord. He is scheduled to report within one micro. Very well. I shall be in my quarters. Notify me if anything changes. Aye, my lord. Cargo bay pressurized to one atmosphere. All right, you guys are clear. Secure anything that didn't clear the ramp door. Will do. Do you think it worked? Tika says that Wi-Fi is in a holding position and not pursuing. That's the best we can hope for right now. Is Joffrey doing okay? He was actually a big help. Not surprising. Some people do just about anything for a million monetary units. You mean like hide in a cave for two days while we rescue some local natives from rage? Hey, I had medical issues. I was directed to stay there. Is it my fault there were millions in diamonds in there? We are in established orbit over the horizon from Wi-Fi. Resume normal navigation procedures. Maintain radio silence. As far as Titan Control knows, we blew up. That'll be good if Wi-Fi tries to contact them. Returning to normal navigation. Radio silence. All right, Major. We've resumed normal navigation. Maintain radio silence. You and Joffre can go to the wreck area. I'll meet you there and we can discuss strategy. I'm sure Joffre's anxious to get after Lister. Copy that. We'll meet you in about ten. Well, look who's up and walking around. Dr. Baker, what brings you to this side? I had to check on my favorite patient. I see Ruth has just taken your vitals. It all looks good. How's the PT going? I'm sure Ruth filled you in on my progress. I only know what she observes. I want to hear directly from you. How do you feel about the physical therapy? How does anybody feel about physical therapy? Hate it. <laughs> Who doesn't? But how do you feel about your progress? I know I've come a long way. There was a time when no one expected me to ever walk again. That's exactly right. And look at you now. I see here where you walked two miles on a treadmill today. Walked on a treadmill two miles. A few months ago, I was running a marathon. I even qualified for the Eagle Man in my hometown. You've heard the expression, baby steps. In this case, it's quite literal. You weren't expected to make it, Agent Hawk. The fact that you were able to walk two miles is nothing less than a miracle. Add to that, you're talking to me in a natural voice. It may sound natural to someone who doesn't know me, but to myself, family, friends, and co-workers, I'll be a stranger. Until they make the short adjustment. We didn't transplant your personality. Everyone keeps telling you this, and we will continue to do so until you listen. You're still Kate Hawk. I know, Dr. Baker. I've never really been a patient person. Which makes you a hard worker. Ruth tells me you push through and go beyond what is expected in your PT. That's why I have good news for you. No more PT? Just the opposite. Accelerated PT. You call that good news? At Walter Reed Hospital. And you can have unrestricted visitors, although I suggest you keep them to a minimum. Okay, that softens the blow a little. But it's my understanding that the IDF doesn't have a lot of agents there. Which is why Ruth is being transferred, and you will be her only patient. I'll admit, Doctor, that is good news, but how are you going to justify that? Your job as a Homeland Security Special Agent makes you a high security risk. Someone could drug you and extract important information. 
even information concerning the IDF. Ruth has top secret clearance and will be assigned as your sole therapist. You really think the brass at Walter Reed will buy that? They already have. Director Holliday has intervened on your behalf and convinced authorities that your job goes well beyond translating Chinese for Homeland. Do you feel up to a commercial flight? You mean, am I psychologically ready to get back on board something that flies after what happened to me? Well... I'll start packing. the dumbest thing I've ever been part of. You know this is insane, right? And I suggest you don't blow it, Lenora. First of all, Captain Miller, it's Lieutenant Bush, not Lenora. <laughs> oh, that's rich. Rich? Funny. Why is that funny? Have you had long layovers on my home planet, Earth? Planet 310? No. Why? Oh, nothing, really. It's just that Miller and Bush are competitive companies. I don't care if they are owned by a brother and a sister. I'm Lieutenant Bush, and you're Captain Miller. Whatever floats your boat there, Bush. Look, you might think this is one big joke, but don't forget that the lives of your crew and captain is in your hands. Don't worry there, Bush. As we say on Earth, it's Miller time. Captain, how can I help you? Captain Miller, this is my co-pilot, Lieutenant Bush. We're here for our aircraft. Aircraft? Hold on. I don't see a request for any Captain Miller. It's for Operation Headhunter. We should be down for a C-10. Here, maybe these will help. It appears these came straight from headquarters. I don't understand why I don't have a record of them here. Look, Sarge, judging from your service stripes, you've been in a while. You're surprised there's a snafu in the orders? I mean, I didn't even get them until yesterday. Everything looks to be in order. I take it you're both qualified in the C-10? No, never been in one in my life. I thought, what better time to learn than in a major joint service exercise? Captain Miller, you have hundreds of hours in this aircraft. (laughs) That's all right. Cap's busting my chops. I deserve it. Our C-10 is on the Delta ramp. I'll send out a fuel truck to top you off. Sounds like a plan. So, LT, you're ready for your first flying lesson? Captain, I have over 500 hours in this aircraft. She falls for it every time. Hold on, Captain. Your personnel file just came through. Is there a problem? Yes, there is. I'm sorry, Captain Miller. I had no idea you fought in the Battle of Titan III. Well, I was just a wet-behind-the-ears second lieutenant back then. You had 22 kills as a second Louis. That was unheard of. Double ace. It says here you separated three years ago. What happened? One day, I was flying along fat, dumb, and happy, and I decided I'd had enough. What brought you back? You know, Sarge, I ask myself that question every day. Again, I apologize for the runaround. Here's your logbook and charts. Good hunting. Thanks. What in the crawl were you doing? Being myself. Being yourself? You tell that man you've never flown a C-10 and I'm about to take my first flight lesson? Are you crazy? Like a fox. And by the way, 22 kills? Really? You know I only had two. I don't know what a fox is, but you could have blown our cover and I didn't see the harm in embellishing your record. As for telling him that neither one of us had ever flown a C-10, remember this. The best lie is often the truth sent in a different direction. I must commend you on your ruse, Captain Nate. I believe you would make a worthy fugitive for me to hunt. Thanks, Joffre. I think. No action from Wi-Fi? Nothing so far. His ship's still in a holding position over Titan IV's main port. Please tell me that we are not going to sit up here circling this desolate rock until he makes a move. 
we're going to establish a geosynchronous orbit over the western coast of their western continent. Once we've done that, Major Wood will take you and his crew to the surface and proceed east to intercept Lister. What happened to our plan to go to Charlie 3 Papa Oscar? Just a gut feeling. If Lister wants to gather former Rage members, I think he'll start there and work his way west. And if he is looking for a large force, he'll most likely need another ship. What makes you say that? Because the Ulysses is a Class A cargo ship. She's fast, but has a modest cargo bay. Tam Fielder's ship? You know her? We've downed a few at Scully's together. She's a top-notch captain. How can you be sure it's her? Because tracking is my business, Captain Nate. She left port without clearance and no manifest and took on no cargo. And as far as I know, Lister has not been seen in the area since. The IDF requires all commercial carriers to maintain a certain transponder frequency. All you have to do is track it from the bat. Lister is not an idiot, Captain. I'm certain that one of his first orders was to shut down the transponder and disable their ELT. If he doesn't have an ELT and crashes, no one will find him. That's the whole idea, Major. Which is why Captain Nate's plan is our best alternative. Again, sir, you would make a worthy opponent. Rogers has taught you well. How's he doing, by the way? Last time I was in Scully's, I heard he got married. Wait a minute. We are talking about THE Rick Rogers, right? He didn't marry that Jubatan pilot. What was her name? Sheena. If he had married her, he would have been at dinner on the honeymoon. <laughs> no, he didn't marry the lizard woman. But close. He married some chick who clones dinosaurs for zoo parks. Go figure. Agent Simon, welcome back to Boulder Bar Central. Ginger, what a pleasant surprise. And you brought your own mode of transportation, a golf cart. Oh, I didn't realize they played the game here on Boulder Bar. It's catching on here, but we have the cart because it's small and easy to handle. You can put your baggage right in the back here and climb aboard. I'll take you right to your quarters. I must say, it's been a while since you and I had a good chinwag. What's been going on since my last visit? You mean since Lister escaped from here? Yes, and then escaped from Titan Three. It's pretty much business as usual. As you know, we've commissioned the Mercury to transport Major Witt and an Alpha team to go after Lister. Yes, and I heard about their unfortunate detour. As I understand it, he found his way back. Do you know if they have reunited with the Mercury? I believe they have. I'm sure the controller will bring you the latest updates when you meet with him. Yes, I suppose so. It's been my experience that if you really want to know what's going on, talk to the personal secretaries. <laughs> well, there might be some truth to that. Your quarters are not very far, just up here on the right. I understand you had a successful mission back on 310. In a place called Johannesburg, which is a country called South Africa? Yes, we were able to solve the attempted bombing of a communications tower. We still aren't 100% sure that it was a rage plot. It just might be industrial espionage with a twist. A twist? Yes. We employed the services of three IDF agents, plus myself as an MI6 agent and a Hongan mercenary. Now I'm confused. MI6, as I remember, that's your country's secret security agency. That is correct. And they had you working a case with the IDF in this Johannesburg, a foreign country? Again, you are correct. With a Hongan mercenary? That would be sad. He was part of an unsuccessful attempt to destroy the emergency response system of a major city in America where Rogers was from. How on earth did you get him to help you? He failed in his mission and was captured by an IDF agent named Soren. A Hongan who failed and didn't commit suicide? Soren was able to tranquilize him and remove the poison capsule from the hollow tooth. We offered him a cover story that made him out to be a hero in his people's eyes. As it turned out, he proved to be very useful, not only to us, but to another IDF case involving a Hongan. Amazing! 
Ginger, do you have Agent Simon yet? Yes, sir. We're en route to his quarters now. Proceed to HQ immediately. We just received word from Titan Departure Control that the Mercury reported a bomb aboard and made an immediate departure. Radar detected an explosion and all comms have been lost. Simon, I'm afraid we have to cancel your mission. Oh, dear. This is absolutely dreadful. What will happen now that the IDF believes the Mercury has been lost? Will Kate make a successful move to Walter Reed? And will Gabby be able to complete the theft of the cargo plane? Find out the answers to these and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, The Falling Mercury. You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre. And the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!